Hi there, Jared Borman here. I'm an instructional technology consultant at the Keystone AEA. And a lot of schools are going one-to-one. -one. And right now, there are a variety of devices out there in a one-to-one -one environment. Uh, a lot of schools are going MacBooks, MacBook Airs, uh, iPads. Some schools are going BYOD, which is bring your own device. Um, I come from a school that was one-to-one -one with iPads. And I do have to say that one strategy that really changed my uh, instruction was the fact that my students were able to wirelessly project to my computer or to my projector in my classroom. So that way we could see what was exactly on the board that was on their iPad or for example myself, I could wirelessly project to my projector so that way we're not really tethered to the projector or the board in one specific spot in the classroom. This is a really powerful tool and I want to show you how to set this up because I there are schools out there that are going one-to-one -one with Chromebooks and I was kind of brainstorming how can we achieve the same type of function with Chromebooks and I think I have a little bit of a solution for those classrooms that would like to try this out and give their students an opportunity to also share their projects, their work, what they're working on on their Chromebook themselves so that way we make the learning more collaborative and we make the learning more interactive and we also make it more student-centric give them a chance to show their examples or use them as examples of what's going well and what's not going so well and how can we change the instruction or how can I change the instruction as an educator as a teacher so this is how I would set it up or here's what, the, what I've discovered with tinkering with a few options now in a classroom with Apple devices you would use probably an Apple TV in your classroom and I've been in classrooms where they do have Apple TV set up actually hooked directly up to the projector in the classroom and then the students and teacher within that classroom can project wirelessly to that projector uh, in a one-to-one -one Chromebook setting however Chromebooks don't really wirelessly project or wirelessly stream with an Apple TV or an Apple device instead what you end up having to buy is a Chromecast and that's the device that we're going to end up using which is going to allow uh, any Chrome browser or Chrome device or Android device in fact if you're in a BYOD and the majority of your students actually have Android devices and you want to utilize that in your BYOD this is another option so when you take this out of the package you have just this the Chromecast this is it okay however it also comes with a few other cables and this is the other one that you're gonna need and that is the power source just like an Apple TV you're going to need to plug your Chromecast into a power source. So when you set this up in your classroom, be mindful of the fact that you just don't plug this little thing in, but you have to plug this in and have it plugged in to a power source of some kind. And that's what's gonna run off of. So that's one thing to keep in mind. So here's the first setup I have as far as getting your Chromecast to work in your classroom with your projector. It's kind of a crude setup, but it gives you the idea. If you have a projector that does have an HDMI input, then you can go ahead and plug your Chromecast directly into that uh, input. And on the back side, you'll see that it plugs directly into the back side. Also, what you're going to want to do is if you want better sound, set up some type of external speaker and plug in the audio so that way when you stream from your laptop to the Chromecast, the video will project in HDMI and then your audio will also output to an external speaker. Otherwise, you're going to be running off of the projector speakers and I don't know if that's going to really be what you want for your classroom but it is one option but then your Chromecast in order for your Chromecast to work like we said you gotta have it plugged in for power source which I have set up over here and that setup's pretty straightforward and very simple and then you'll be able to Chromecast from your laptop so if you don't have a projector that has HDMI directly in the back for input and you have just simply a VGA computer that meaning it plugs in with the computer cable then I would recommend an adapter and there are two that I'm going to be covering and this is the first one that I just ordered from Amazon uh, it's a female to VGA female video adapter and I have it right here and what you're gonna see with this adapter is that on one side on one side you're gonna have the HDMI input this is what your Chromecast is gonna plug into and on the other side this is what's gonna plug into your VGA cable and I'll show you that but then on the side this side in particular this is your audio this is kinda handy because when you convert to VGA you're gonna have your Chromecast plugging into this end 
but then on this end is going to be your VGA cable. VGA is video only. It's not audio. So your video cable is going to plug into this end, but then you're also going to need speakers to plug into this. And this little device actually has both built right into it. And I've tested it out already, and I'll show you how good a quality it is. So with this setup, from the projector, we have the computer input, and that's your VGA cable. And that's the one in the back that usually you have to, if you want to, you can screw in so that way it stays more secure to the projector itself. But then you have, and maybe this is the way it is set up in your classroom, usually your projector is not in the same place as, say, your computer or some sort, but sometimes you'll have this big long cord, which I have kind of wound around here, and then you have your VGA, the other end of your VGA right here. But then that adapter that I just showed actually plugs right into the VGA end, but then the other end allows for the Chromecast to plug in, and if I wanted to, I could plug in my external speakers on this side of the adapter, and that way, whatever I end up Chromecasting to the Chromecast here, whatever I end up airplane or whatever you want to call it, that's going to end up being audio and video. And then what it does, it goes in, and then it's going to send the video that way, and it's going to send the audio that way. So depending on where the projector is located in your room, depending on if it's a VGA projector, depending on what kind of setup you need, this is another option. Just again, make sure you have the Chromecast plugged in for the power in order for it to work properly. And as you can see, the Chromecast works just fine. Here's another adapter that's another option that works just as well. It's from svideo.com. And as you can see, it's a Chromecast to VGA converter. And I'll show you what that looks like here. It is bigger than the other adapters you can see because you do have the converter box here. You have the plug-in end. But the thing is, this end does not plug into the Chromecast. It doesn't allow the Chromecast to plug in. So what they do is they include this little adapter where the Chromecast can plug into one end and then the adapter can plug into the other end. And I will show you what that looks like when it's set up. But then on the box itself, you have the VGA end, just like the other adapter. You have the VGA plug-in, but you also have here the audio. So it includes the audio as well. So here's the setup with the second adapter. Once again, I have the same VGA cable plugged into the computer input or VGA input onto the projector. And then the other end of the cable is plugged into the adapter here. And then that adapter is connected to this little other adapter, which basically allows this adapter to connect directly to the Chromecast. And if I wanted to, on the back side of this, I have that audio input where I could Chromecast from my computer to the Chromecast through the adapter, which is basically allowing the two to connect with one another. Then the video signal is, is converted into the VGA cable. And then if I had audio plugged in, it would then convert it to the audio as well. And as you can see, the video quality is just as good as the other adapter. And we'll have to test it out and see what Chromecast looks like. When you first set up your Chromecast, there'll be some instructions that'll pop up on the screen. Now I've already gone ahead and set up my Chromecast, so that's not really showing up, but everything will show up on the screen that'll walk you through the steps. Depending on your device, the teacher device, if you have a Mac, if you have a PC, if you yourself have a Chromebook, the setup is slightly different. For example, when I set it up on my Mac, you have to download this Chromecast app that will walk you through the steps of setting up your Chromecast. Now you have to make sure that your Chromecast, because right now this is setting up my Chromecast, your Chromecast has to be on the same wireless network as your computer. That's the only, uh, that's the only technical setup that you need to make sure is right. And in a school, you might have multiple channels of your internet, so you have to make sure there's a channel set up or that your computer and your Chromecast is set up on the same channel. But most likely there will be a password. I've already got that entered. I've labeled my Chromecast, labeled for me, so I know that this is my Chromecast to my particular office. You can label it your Chromecast to your particular classroom, so that way students know which one to Chromecast to. And then the rest of it should be pretty self-explanatory. And then you can go ahead and set up and hit done or finish, and it'll finish setting it all up. And as you can see, my Chromecast is currently set up. Once I have Chromecast actually set up, now I can go ahead and set up my Chrome browser. Keep in mind that you can only Chromecast, you can only cast 
what's in your Chrome browser. So I've gone to the Chrome Web Store here. I have Chromecast. I did a search, and the first thing that will pop up are the apps. But what I need is the Chromecast extension. This is directly from Google, Google Cast. And I already have it installed. And what you'll see is it looks like this icon right here. Once I have this set up, I will actually be able to cast any tab. And I can only cast one tab at a time. So if I wanted to say go to the Keystone AEA website and I wanted to cast this particular website, I would select my cast icon and I would select the Borman Chromecast, which is the Chromecast that I've set up. And when I do, it will now be casting the AEA website. So you will see that I'm at the Keystone AEA website. I currently have that tab open. And if you look really closely on my tab, you'll notice that there is in fact a little Chromecast icon on that tab. That means I am currently and wirelessly Chromecasting to my projector set up over there. And that projector is casting the AEA website. But notice at the very top, I don't have a bunch of tabs open. That's because I'm only wirelessly reflecting that tab and that screen that's on that tab. On my computer, I can go to other tabs. I can go to my Google Drive. I can go to any other tab I want. But notice that it continues to reflect only the tab that I have casting. So that might be handy as a teacher if you need to cast a particular website or let's say, for example, if a student wanted to cast and a student wanted to cast one particular tab, they certainly could. And that way you don't become super distracted with anything else. But it's only one tab at a time. And if I wanted to switch, let's say, for example, I wanted students to see this particular tab. Then what I need to do is I need to go over to my Chromecast icon once again. I need to select my Chromecast. And that's the Chromecast I want. And that gives me two options, cast this tab or stop casting. Nope, I now want to switch to this tab. And when I do, you will notice that my projector now switches over to that particular tab and no other tab whatsoever. Another slight difference as well, you can see the mouse move on my computer screen. However, when it is projected and casted, you do not see a mouse moving at all. You can see me mouse over objects and you can see pop-up bubbles and secondary menus and everything pop up, but you will not be able to see my actual mouse move. That could be a, a positive, that could be a negative, depending on what you're trying to do in your classroom. However, just be aware that that's also a difference in between casting and air playing or using any other type of device to wirelessly reflect in your classroom. Now let's say I want to go ahead and stop casting. I've shown what I've wanted to show. Students have seen what they need to see, or in fact, the student has already casted and is done casting or you, they're done showing what they need to show. So what I need to do is I need to go back to my icon over here. Don't go to the icon in the tab. That's just showing that that tab is being casted. This tab's content is being shared. So what I need to do is I need to go back to my casting icon over here. And right now you'll see what's being casted. And I'm just gonna go ahead and select stop casting. And when I do, my Chromecast will go back to its home screen and therefore I'm done casting. Now I was on my teacher computer. Let's say I was on uh, my Mac here, but the students are one-to-one -one with Chromebooks and I have a Chromebook set up here, uh, the same tab and everything. And if a student wanted to Chromecast then, for example, it'll only cast one student at a time. So if I wanted a student to Chromecast, I would do the exact same thing. I've installed the Chrome extension from the Chrome Web Store on this computer as well. And over here, you'll notice it doesn't really show up all of my extensions. It's in this little drop down menu. And when I go to this drop down menu, there's Google Cast right there. And when I select this one, the student then would go ahead and select the Chromecast that they want to cast. And it'll say that it is casting. And if you notice, it in fact is. Same thing though with a Chromebook, even from a Mac to a Chromebook, same exact thing. No tabs at the top. I do have the scroll bar. And you will not be able to see a mouse as the mouse moves. You'll still be able to see the mouse overs, the little bubbles that pop up. And the mouse is hovering over an icon or anything like that or a link of some kind. But it does not show the mouse movement. So just be aware of that. 
um, if the student wanted to stop Chromecasting, they would go to the same process, stop casting, and now the next student can go ahead and cast, no problem. So I hope this video helped for those teachers that are in one-to-one -one classrooms with Chromebooks. The power of this ability really is instructional changing. You will be much more active in the classroom. You'll be moving throughout the classroom. But how powerful is it to teach in real time? Uh, some teachers have told me that they're really tired of being tethered directly to their document camera or they're really tired of having to, they want to move around the room but then they have to come back to the front of the room every time because their computer is hooked up directly to the projector and that's the only way. If they wanted to use, say, the student's device, then they bring the device up to the front of the classroom, hook that up, and then the students can share out that way. All of that is cumbersome. All of that is time consuming. We're trying to make learning more efficient. And the best way to do that is to be able to wirelessly project, and especially in a classroom full of Chromebooks, now we have that ability with Chromecast. So try it out, please, I encourage you. Um, use it in your classroom and discover the fact that it is empowering for the students. When they have that ability, with your permission, of course, and your classroom management, to be able to project what they're learning. If they have a question, rather than you going to them and helping only them and leaving everybody in the dark, give them and just say, cast it. The student casts up on the screen what their question is. Other students in the classroom can see exactly what their question is. You can directly, uh, you can directly answer that question. Problem solved. Not only that, maybe they're working on a project and you want to actually use theirs as an example of what's going really well with the project or something amazing, put it up there in real time. Good luck. I would love to hear your ideas as far as how you're using Chromecast and one-to-one -one Chromebook setting.